Hi, in this video I'm going to be taking some informal RF radiation measurements for the PS4 controller and the Xbox One controller. I'm going to connect these game controllers using Bluetooth and then I'm going to connect it using a wired connection and then compare the RF radiation with the different connections. Right, over here I have an RF meter. It is called the EMF390 and over there there's a display and it shows you the RF radiation. Right, so I've removed the controllers and you can see that the RF radiation at the moment is pretty low. It is less than one milliwatt per meter squared. Right, now as I bring a cell phone nearby you can see how the RF meter immediately recognizes the RF signal from the radio from the cell phone and even though the cell phone is not ringing there is some Wi-Fi connectivity and cellular signaling to a nearby base station and you can see the meter is operating and the meter at times even says hi and there's a little LED that is flashing there. Now when that LED flashes it makes a little beeping sound while the LED flashes. Now I'm going to be doing these tests on a desktop computer with a gigabyte motherboard and there you can see the RF antenna for the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connectivity. So when I put the meter next to the RF antenna you can see that it's actually pulsing high all the time and it's ranging from between 50 and 65 milliwatts per square meter. Now the RF antenna is now about half a meter away from the meter and the meter is now reading very low again. So there you can see the meter barely goes over one milliwatt because of the inverse square law and what it says about the increasing distance drastically reduces the power density. Now in this test I'm going to start with this one controller. I'm going to wirelessly connect it to the computer and I'm going to measure the RF radiation right at the controller. So this would be the RF radiation that the user would be subjected to when they're holding the controller and playing. In this particular test I'm going to be using the game Rocket League which is a very active game so there's a lot of signaling between the controller and the computer. Right, these measurements are taken at one meter away from the computer, basically one meter away from the antenna. Right, so you can see that when I hold the meter close to the controller, it's hovering between 4 and 6 milliwatts per square meter. Now, these meters are extremely sensitive, so if I change the orientation of the meter, and I now hold the meter even closer, changing the angle slightly, you can see that it's actually increased. Now, it's actually coming up as high. You can see it is a continuous pulsing there, so it is constantly receiving and transmitting. And when I move the meter around the controller, there are some places where it is higher versus some places where it is lower. And the reason for that is there is an RF antenna inside this controller. Right, so there you can see the maximum I'm measuring. Now it's quite high because I'm holding the meter very close to where the RF antenna is of the Xbox unit. So now my meter is between the Xbox controller and the antenna of the computer. So you can see that I'm actually getting 24, 25 milliwatts per square meter. Right, so you can see that when I put the meter right here in the line of sight of the controller to the antenna, the transmissions are considerably higher. Right, so you can see the measurement there. And there was a peak one, so in this case there was a peak of 73.5 milliwatts per square meter. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect it using the wire. Right, now the controller is connected via the USB port. We have not switched any Bluetooth off, we've merely plugged in the USB cable. So now we can see that the RF transmissions have reduced to zero. Now we'll test the PS4 controller. Right, now I have the PS4 controller, it is connected wirelessly, and there you can see the transmissions. And there you can see the transmissions. Right, so in this case we can see a peak of 123 and now we'll test it when it is plugged in. Right, now the PS4 controller is connected via USB and while it is connected via USB we are still getting the RF transmissions there. So there we can see 31, 27, so far I've had a peak of 57 milliwatts per meter squared. 
Right, when I hold it here in the corner, you can see it's become much higher. It is now close to 150 there, 180. Um, it actually had a peak of 342. Right, so there we can see when the meters held over here, uh, averaging about 120. And you can see the transmissions are continuous. What is interesting is that it is plugged in via the USB, but it is still transmitting wirelessly. Right, now what we've done is we've actually switched off the Bluetooth on the computer and the controller is now working with just the USB, but we had to manually switch off the Bluetooth. And there you can see the RF uh, power density. It's reduced to a negligible amount. Right, to put this in perspective, a Bluetooth speaker radiating near the meter comes in at about 10 to 12 milliwatts per square meter. Right, so comparing it to a cell phone, I now have a cell phone with the Wi-Fi on, you can see that a cell phone is considerably higher, although it does drop down, then it peaks up again, then it does drop down, and then it picks up again. So it's definitely asynchronous. See, look at the cell phone, it even dropped to, uh, to normal. But then obviously the Wi-Fi is going to do some signal checks. Right, so I'm actually streaming a YouTube video, and if I put the meter by the phone... That's what it looks like. All right, so there you can see some comparisons. These are very informal, but interesting nevertheless. And thanks for watching and cheers.